Warning, this content may be upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. A teenage boy was with his family at their cabin in the woods that they went to every summer. Nearby was another cabin, which was abandoned and sealed. Since the windows and doors were boarded up, the boy tried to enter through the chimney. The problem was, it was a pretty tight fit, with no room to maneuver. To make matters worse, once he reached the bottom, the fireplace was too short for him to bend his knees and slide out. He died in that chimney. His family searched for him, but nobody found him for years, until the cabin was demolished. He became one of the many poor unfortunates who become cautionary tales for urban explorers. I would look at the case of Kiki Camarena. Camarena was an undercover DEA agent that was captured and tortured by a cartel in the 80s. He was injected with amphetamines and other drugs to ensure that he remained conscious while being tortured over a 30-hour period, culminating with a hole drilled into his head with a power drill. After his death the agency went after the cartel's heart and as a result, the cartels considered it generally taboo to go after a DEA agent. He essentially died and thus ensured that, for a while at least, the cartels were too afraid to hurt or kill any of his fellow agents. Not that he sacrificed himself on purpose or anything. Soldiers who fell into the bogs created by shell holes in no man's land in World War I. It would take 12 to 24 hours to sink and drown in the mud. It was impossible to get out, toxic from the gas, and various other deadly items in it. Consort Qi was consort to Emperor Jezu of the Chinese Han Dynasty, and she bore him a son. The Empress, Liu Ji, was attempting to push her son to be the Emperor's heir, though the Emperor preferred the son of his consort. This infuriated Liu Ji. So she did the logical thing, and had Qi shaved, placed in chains and dressed as a prisoner. She had assassins force poison down Qi's son's throat, she cut off her lips, cut out her tongue, gouged out her eyes, and had her arms and legs amputated. Afterward, she threw her in a manure-filled pigsty, where she survived for several torturous days, being presented as the human swine. Liu Ji's son, having become the next emperor, was so disgusted by her cruelty he became a fervent alcoholic basically giving up his duties as regent. A great example is Da Ji, creator of the Palau. A bronze cylinder covered with oil was heated like a furnace with charcoal beneath until its sides became extremely hot. The victim was made to walk on top of the slowly heating cylinder and he was forced to shift his feet to avoid the burning. The oily surface made it difficult for the victim to maintain his position and balance. If the victim fell into the charcoal below, he would be burned to death. The victim was forced to dance and scream in agony before dying. Her husband also had a young consort's father ground into pieces and fed to his friends because she didn't want to run naked in King Joe's meat garden. My favorite martyr, St. Lawrence, of the gridiron, was roasted alive on a huge grill. Reportedly when his roaster asked him to deny his faith, Lawrence said turn me over, I'm done on this side. Junko Furuta, 17 years old. It seems a little redundant to warn those who are sensitive to others' pain in this particular thread, but still. She was captured and repeatedly tortured for 44 days and later burned alive. People knew she was there, but they were too afraid of the boys that kept her captive to help her. I tried typing out what was done to her, but I can't. It feels wrong. Her murderers basically got off free because they were related to gang members and the local police were afraid of them. That poor girl. I read once a guy needed to crawl in and clean a bread baking oven that continued to rotate the conveyor in which the bread was on. The oven had been turned off and cooled, as it was supposed to be, but the guy cleaning didn't give it enough to fully cool on the inside. So he climbed up on top over the conveyors as they slowly pushed him into the oven. About a one-third of the way in he realized it was too hot inside the oven and he tried to back out. The conveyors got caught on his clothes and such and kept feeding him through. He slowly cooked to death as the conveyor mercilessly pushed him through the long oven. He would have felt every bit of it. How about that caver in Utah? I think who tried exploring a new section of cave? He got stuck headfirst down in like 8 inches by 18 inches tube that he hoped he could wiggle through to a bigger portion on the other side. There was no bigger portion. They spent a day trying to get him out, almost did but the rigging failed and he wedged deeper into the hole. He eventually died by being upside down so long. They ended up filling the cave entrance with concrete and consider the entire thing his grave. In Judea, during the time of the Roman occupation, crucifixion was considered so horrible, it was forbidden to be practiced on Roman citizens. They would strip you fully naked, despite what is shown on every crucifix in existence, and then give you 39 lashes. At least, they were supposed to, 
the Romans would keep going until they felt giving you any more would render you unable to lift your cross. Then, you'd take it to whatever site they picked out, and because of your injuries, you would be unable to resist when they throw you down, and nail your hands and feet to the cross. Once lifted up, they break your legs, so you can't boost yourself up. You die of blood loss in hours if you're lucky, days if not. A German soldier who was told by Russian soldiers that they'd shoot him as soon as he stopped playing the piano. Guy played for like more than 24 hours straight before collapsing in tears, at which point the Russians, somewhat impressed, laughed and promptly shot him point blank. The execution of the Munster Anabaptists. Three men, strapped to a stake so they could feel all the vibrations, and hear and smell what was happening to the others. Each one was tortured, individually for an hour, with white hot tongs, their skin was ripped away, their flesh cooked, their muscles torn, their tongues ripped out. If they at any point went unconscious, that time was not counted towards their hour. They had to be alive and awake for it all. They were tortured one by one. Imagine being the last of the three, knowing what's coming for two hours, and then, finally, getting it. In 1536, Bernard Krechting, Bernard Nipperdaling, and Jan van Leiden were chained to stakes in the Munster public square, tortured with flesh-ripping tongues for more than an hour. Killed with daggers thrust into their hearts, and their remains hoisted in cages in the city cathedral as a warning against any similar misbehavior in the future. I read somewhere that a guy was running from the police one night and crawled into a metal pipe in some woodland. Police gave up when they couldn't find him. Guy ends up wedged in the pipe and then the rats found him and ate him alive starting through his eyeballs. Keel hauling. There is an astoundingly brutal death by this method in the show Black Sails. Basically, a person would be attached to a pulley system on a pirate ship that when pulled, would drag the person underwater and across to the other side of the ship. Along the way, their body would be dragged against the bottom of the ship, ripping their skin away until they get dragged up the other side. This continues until death. The bottom of the ship was covered in barnacles. These are very sharp, and resulted in pieces of flesh, or even whole limbs being sliced from the victim's body. On top of all this, the person is drowning, and the salt water in the wounds would be agony. The person was usually dragged from the port side to the starboard side. If that didn't kill him, they would take him back over to the port side, and do it again. I've been reading some American history lately and was shocked to hear how horrible some of the Comanche bands would torture people to death. Regular tortures included cutting off eyelids then burying people up to their necks so their eyes basically cooked while they were alive, then eventually they starved. Or, wrapping people up in untanned leather, then putting them in the sun so they were slowly suffocated to death as the leather shrank. Or, roasting people alive. Or, mental torture, such as nailing live babies to trees in front of their parents, torture on the baby as well obviously. Apparently some tribes would travel over 1,000 miles just to exact a torturous revenge on people who cross them. Omira Sanchez Garcon. A 13 years old Colombian girl who became trapped, pinned under the debris of her house in flood water after the eruption of a volcano where she survived for 60 hours before she died. A photo of her was taken in her last days. On the third night, Sanchez began hallucinating, saying that she did not want to be late for school, and mentioned a maths exam. Near the end of her life, Sanchez's eyes redden, her face swelled, and her hands whitened. There was an article not long ago about a guy having a stroll with his dog in the Yellowstone Park. He came upon some hot wellspring and his dog jumped in. The spring was super hot and was slowly cooking the dog so the guy jumped in to save his four-legged friend. After he got out of the wellspring, he was so burnt by the hot water that he died moments after seeing his dog being ended by the same fate. Genghis Khan once went full Khal Drogo, the Mongols refused to spill noble blood so they had to find different ways to kill noble without spilling their blood. Genghis once had a noble killed by pouring molten silver in his eyes, ears, mouth and probably every other hole in his body. Giles Corey was pressed to death, or basically crushed by placing a board over him and laying rocks on it. He was subjected to it because he was accused of witchcraft and refused to plea, so the sheriff oversaw the pressing while waiting for a plea. When noon rolled around and the sheriff asked him what his plea was, Giles said, more rocks. The Dreamworld Incident in Australia. Comparatively quick, but to me the most objectively horrifying. Four people were basically drowned, decapitated and essentially put through a giant meat grinder simultaneously in front of their young children. In seconds, 
because of one little mistake, on a ride that was suitable for toddlers and had operated for 40 years without incident. Like, they didn't even do anything remotely dangerous. They didn't rebel against an evil government or go caving in a sketchy place or have a dangerous job. They were just having fun with their families and they went in an instant to suffering the most horrifying death possible. I know of someone that was pulled through a wood chipper, feet first. He'd been missing for a few days when someone spotted his tractor in a field. They went to investigate and found red, gooey wood chippings. The fuel had run out on the tractor and when they added more and started it up, it started up to its slowest setting. The kind of speed used for really, really large logs. He'd been pulled in over the course of three minutes. A forensic investigation found that he'd tried to dislodge a stubborn log using his foot and slipped. There were finger marks near the top then bloody ones where his fingertips had been scraped away. The story of David Box. Dave Box died in 1984, working in a uranium processing plant. His death occurred in a uranium furnace, they found out when the furnace temperature dropped by 28 degrees when it was kept at a constant 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. He had apparently fallen into the furnace, which investigators ruled a suicide. Evidently, he was conscious during his time in the radioactive smelting furnace. It took three days for it to be cooled off enough for investigators to dig through. His remains were so irradiated they could not even be buried, but rather had to be stored in a special hazardous waste compound. But what makes this even stranger, is the nature of his death. This would have been extremely painful. No one would want to go out this way. Later that year, in 1984, Fernald, the company, came under public scrutiny for releasing millions of pounds of uranium dust into the atmosphere. The family speculates that Dave Box was actually murdered by other employees or company men as they suspected he was the whistleblower who let it known to the public of Fernald's misdoings. He was killed for telling the truth, lowered into the smelter like Terminator 2 by some corrupt co-workers. I remember seeing this in another thread. I don't remember the whole circumstance but I remember that some guy at a bar tried hitting on a girl or something and some other dude who I think was with her got angry. But anyways he took him outside and beat him up and threw him down a sewer that was 18 feet. That didn't kill him, but at the bottom of the sewer there was 300 degree boiling water, so he was basically being cooked alive in a small area and apparently it took several hours to kill him too. People reported hearing someone screaming for help from down there but no one could save him because it was too dangerous to go down there. When they finally recovered him, all of his internal organs were cooked. The Goyania accident is a heart-wrenching story about a stolen radiation source that went on to kill several innocent people in horrific ways, including a little girl. When a cleanup team arrived at the hospital, she was discovered confined alone in a room because hospital staff were too afraid to go near her. I mean there's acute radiation sickness, and then there's acute radiation sickness without any painkillers or treatment. I believe her mother also perished and her father committed suicide afterwards. This guy who attempted to kill Louis XV of France, Robert Francois Damien. Fetched from his prison cell on the morning of March 28, 1757, Damien allegedly said La journée sera rude, the day will be hard. He was first subjected to a torture in which his legs were painfully compressed by devices called boots. He was then tortured with red-hot pincers, the hand with which he had held the knife during the attempted assassination was burned using sulfur, molten wax, molten lead, and boiling oil were poured into his wounds. He was then remanded to the royal executioner, Charles-Henri Sanson, who harnessed horses to his arms and legs to be dismembered. But Damien limbs did not separate easily. The officiants ordered Sanson to cut Damien tendons, and once that was done the horses were able to perform the dismemberment. Once Damien was dismembered, to the applause of the crowd, his reportedly still living torso was burned at the stake. Being skinned alive. First, they will try to loosen the skin, to do this they will either A. Dip you alive in boiling water or B. Leave you out in the sun to get sunburned, then they will start to remove the skin and you will feel every nerve ending getting severed. During this you'll start to feel very cold, because believe it or not, your skin keeps you warm, and infection will probably set in very quickly too. If you're lucky, you may lose consciousness, but not everyone will, but the worst part? It may take days for you to die. I recently read of this guy who was thrown by his friend into a steam tunnel in New York City. The tunnel was filled with boiling water and, well, steam, duh. There was no way to get him out, and he boiled alive like a lobster, his skin sloughing off over the course of an hour until he finally succumbed. 